Hi, first grade. We are back for another math lesson. And for this math lesson, you are going to need your dry erase board, dry erase marker, tissue to wipe your board, and your counting tape. And you may want to have your cubes just nearby in case we use them, but we may not have to. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Today we are working on subtracting using addition facts, and we are going to be making those fact families. If you remember, let me grab my fact family board. Those awesome fact families that we made a little while ago, okay? And our good friend, Mr. Number Bond, is back with us again, too. So you are going to see, it says you can make a fact family from an addition sentence. So they have here seven pink roses, four yellow roses, and they wrote out that addition number sentence, seven plus four equals 11. And then they plugged those numbers into our number bond because we know that when we add it's part plus part equals whole. So seven and four are our two parts that go in our part section of our number bond. And then 11 is our whole. So that goes in the whole section of the number bond. And then when you have your number bond completely filled, then you have all the information that you need to create two addition number sentences and two subtraction number sentences. So you will see they have seven plus four equals 11, part plus part equals whole. Then we just change the order. We do that turnaround fact, four plus seven equals 11. And then when we have our subtraction number sentences, it's whole minus part equals the other part. So you see there's 11 minus seven equals four. And then you just flip flop the two parts. So 11 minus four equals seven. What it's saying right here is that seven plus four equals 11 is an addition fact. You can use this fact to write other related facts, which is what we did down here with our fact family. Then for number two, it says you can also make a fact family from a subtraction sentence. So right here, it says 13 minus eight equals five. We absolutely can. We just have to be careful, remember, when we're plugging our numbers into our number bond. Okay, so we have to really think and remember that when we have a subtraction number sentence, it is whole minus part equals the other part. So then I have to put my number 13 in the whole section of my number bond because 13 is my whole. And then it's minus part equals the other part. So that means eight and five equals, or eight and five are the two parts. They go on the part section of your number bond. Right here it says, 13 minus eight equals five is a subtraction fact. You can use this fact to write other related facts, which you see they did. They wrote 13 minus eight equals five, then they just flipped the order of the two parts, 13 minus five equals eight, then eight plus five equals 13, part plus part equals whole, and then that turnaround fact, flipping the order of the two parts, five plus eight equals 13, okay? All right. They give you another example over here, two more examples. Now we're actually adding in a word problem with it or a story problem with it. It says there are 12 deer, eight deer are drinking from the pond. How many deer are not drinking from the pond? In order to figure that out, you would have to have a subtraction number sentence, right? If you have 12 deer, eight are drinking from the pond and there are some that are not drinking, you have to take away to figure out how many are not drinking from the pond. So they have 12 minus eight. Now, if you recall back to when we did related and a related addition and subtraction facts a little while ago, we talked about if there's a subtraction sentence right here that they are starting off, they are going to talk about using the related addition sentence, okay? So it says right here, 12 minus eight equals, well, they started plugging things into the number bond. So they have 12 right here, and then they have eight and four as those two parts. And it says that eight plus four equals 12 is the related addition fact. So since eight plus four equals 12, 12 minus eight has to equal four, okay? So it says 12 minus eight equals four, four deer are not drinking from the pond. You could also just use a subtraction strategy and solve 12 minus eight. Okay, for number four, Emma has some balloons. She gives Isaac four balloons. She has nine balloons left. How many balloons does Emma have at first? Well, we are missing our whole, right? When we are missing our whole, we have to add to figure out our whole. 
Up at the top, we were missing a part. Since we were missing a part, we subtracted to find the other part. Now, since we're missing a whole, we have to add our two numbers together to get our whole. So we know that these two numbers have to get added together, four and nine, and that will give us our whole. So it tells us right here that four plus nine equals 13 is the related addition fact. So when we do that, we figure out what our whole is. Our whole is 13. So if four plus nine equals 13, part plus part equals whole, that also has to, that also tells us that 13 minus four equals nine. We would just plug our whole right here to start our subtraction number sentence, since that is our whole when we add those two numbers together, okay? And it also tells us that Emma has 13 balloons at first. All right, we are going to do a problem together. Let me find it. Here we go. Let's go ahead and do this problem together right here. Number one, there's a couple of things I'm going to have you write on your dry erase board. I do want you to go ahead and draw that number bond right now. Okay, so you're going to draw your two part circles, your two lines, and then your whole circle, and you will write an eight and a seven in those two part circles, okay? And then you are going to write eight plus seven equals, and that's all you need to worry about writing at this current moment. Let me show you. Okay, so you will go ahead and write this right now. And it's already telling us basically right away that we need to solve eight plus seven to help us out with figuring out the rest of our fact families. So we're making these fact families again, okay? And you'll see that it's just asking us to make a fact family for each number sentence. We have eight butterflies that are so beautiful, and then we have seven beautiful butterflies. Okay, let's go ahead and use a strategy to solve eight plus seven. For me, I love my counting tape. So I'm going to go ahead, start at my greater number, which is eight, and then count up seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I land on the number 15. So that tells us that eight plus seven equals 15. So go ahead and write eight plus seven equals 15, and then write 15 in the whole section of your number bond. This also might have been a good time to think of your doubles facts, right? So if you're using your doubles facts or your doubles plus one facts, you could have thought, oh, well, I know that seven plus seven, that doubles fact equals 14. Since we're adding eight plus seven, I'd have to add one onto that. That would equal 15. Okay. Now, once you have this information, you have all the information that you need to create your fact family. And I'm going to switch gears right now to my, or I'll do it kind of simultaneously. Here's what I want you to write on your board, and then I'll show you on my little fact family board that I love. Okay. You are going to go ahead and write line plus sign line equals sign line, then line minus sign line equals sign line, and line minus line equals sign line. Remember when we have a fact family, we have two addition number sentences and two subtraction number sentences with those three numbers, okay? And the first thing we wanna talk about is let's do our other addition number sentence. Remember it's part plus part equals whole. We're just doing the turnaround fact. If this one's eight plus seven equals 15, that means that this one has to be seven plus eight equals 15. Awesome. Then when we do our subtraction number sentences, remember that it is whole minus part equals the other part. We know that our whole is 15. So right here we would put 15 minus a part equals the other part. You can pick either part. So maybe I'll say I'll start with minus seven equals eight. And then all you have to do for your other subtraction number sentence is flip the order of your two parts. Your 15 stays here since it's your whole, and we start with our whole for our subtraction number sentence. And then I would just say, okay, well this time I'm going to take away eight and have it equal seven. And that would be our fact family that we just created from solving our first problem and then writing out our two addition number sentences and our two subtraction number sentences using our number bond to help us, okay? All right, let's go ahead and do another one. Go ahead and erase your board. 
And let's take a look. We're going to look at this next page and look at a different example. So I want to look at this example because it kind of shows us a problem in a different way. Okay, using those related addition and subtraction facts where they're not necessarily writing out complete full fact families. So for number three, it says Miguel has 12 eggs. Seven eggs are white. How many eggs are brown? So you are going to see right here that he has, or they have part of our number bond completed. So I want you to go ahead and draw your number bond. Whole line, part circle, line, part circle. In the whole section of your number bond, go ahead and put the number 12. <clears throat> and in the part section of your, of one of, in one of the part sections, go ahead and write the number seven. Okay. And then you are going to see our little friend right here as all these different things. I am going to write those. You do not have to write those. Right now I want you to just have your number bond written out. And I will have you write one other thing in just a moment. Okay, all I want you to write is your number bond and then I want you to write 12 minus seven equals and that's it. You don't need to write anything else. I'm writing it just so we can talk through it. Okay. When you have your whole and one part and you're missing the other part, you need to subtract to solve, right? You have your whole, you have one part. So you need to use a strategy, pick a strategy, subtract and solve. So maybe you say, I'm going to use my counting tape and I'm going to count back. So I would start at the number 12, okay? And then I'd count backwards however many I'm taking away, which is seven. Okay, so I'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'd land on the number five. So that tells us that 12 minus five equals seven. So there's a couple things that we can fill in now. We can put 12 minus seven equals five. We can also put five in our other part section of our number bond. Some of the other things that I would be able to fill in that you guys don't have to worry about if you didn't put it on your board is our related addition fact over here. Well, if we know that 12 minus seven equals five, we also know that seven plus five has to equal 12. Because again, these three numbers either add together or we can subtract them. We can create two addition number sentences and two subtraction number sentences with these three numbers. That's that fact family. So we know part plus part equals whole. So seven plus five equals 12, okay? And we also know because we just solved it that 12 minus seven equals five. And that question at the bottom that I'll show you on that page in a second says, so blank eggs are brown. That means so five eggs are brown, which let me show you really quick. Right here where it talks about once you solve it, that is also the answer right there that you would fill in to say how many eggs are brown, okay? Go ahead and erase your board. We're going to do one more example that goes along with this. And then I'll show you your assignment for today. That other example is number four. What I want you to write is your number bond. Okay, so part, line, whole circle, part, circle, line. And in there it says there's an eight and a six, so eight and six are your two parts because our story problem is there were some birds on a tree. Six birds flew away. Eight birds are left on the tree. How many birds were there in all? So we are missing our whole. We don't have our whole. Okay, so in order to figure out our whole, we need to add together our two numbers, okay? The other thing I want you to write is line minus six equals eight. And I will show you my board in just a second so that you could just copy down what I have. Give me one moment here. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. The only thing that you need to write right now is your number bond and then line minus six equals eight. That is it, you don't need to write that. You don't need to write anything down here. Just number bond with eight and six in the two part circles and then line minus six equals eight. That is it for right now, okay? All right, now we have our two parts but we're missing our whole so we need to add our two parts together, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and grab our counting tape right here and let's go ahead and add eight plus six, starting at my greater number, which is eight, then counting up six times because that's what we're adding. 
here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. When we do that, we land on the number 14. So I'm going to go ahead and put the number 14 in the whole section of my number bond. You guys can do that too. And that also tells us, since that's our whole, that that's going to start off our subtraction number sentence. So that tells us that 14 minus 6 equals 8. Okay, over here I would also write that 8 plus 6 equals 14. That's what we just solved. And 14 minus 6 equals 8 again. And that tells us that there were 14 birds in all because that's our whole and that's what they started off with is 14 birds. Okay. All right, go ahead and erase your board. And let's take a look at our assignment for today so I can talk you through it. Okay, you are completing page 128, but you are only completing numbers 13 to 18. You are not completing 19 and 20. That's what we'll complete tomorrow. Okay, for 13, 14, 15, and 16, you are just solving these subtraction problems using any strategy that you would like. So if you liked the counting back method, you can use that. If you liked the making a 10 and ones method that we did yesterday, you can use that. Whatever strategy works best for you, you will use to solve these four problems. Then down here for 17 and 18, this is using our related addition fact to help us solve our subtraction problem. So what you are going to do is solve our problem 15 minus six, okay? And then write what that related addition fact is. So I would write out your number bond, okay? And when you write out your number bond, remember whole, line, part circle, line, part circle. I would write out 15 minus six, okay? And then I would pick a strategy to solve 15 minus six. And whatever my answer is over here would go in this section, the other part section of my number bond, right? And would also end up equaling my, being my addition number sentence. For example, if I had 13 minus three and I, Solved first using my counting tape, using the counting back method, and said I'll start at 13, count backwards three times, one, two, three. I land on the number 10. I would have 13 minus three equals 10. 10 would go in the other part section of my number bond, and then my related addition fact would simply be me adding together my two parts to equal my whole. So I would just write three plus 10 equals 13. Or I could write 10 plus three equals 13, does not matter which one you write, okay? So that's that process that you are going to complete for these two problems right here, 17 and 18. Solving your subtraction number sentence using any strategy that you would like, and then writing what that related addition fact would be. So adding together you, your two parts to equal your whole, okay? Then all you'll do is take a picture of that page and post it directly onto your Class Dojo portfolio so I can take a look at it, okay? All right, first grade, I look forward to seeing your amazing work and I'll see you tomorrow, bye.